early Boer and British settlers in South Africa. The history of colonialism in South Africa begins with the Dutch in 1652 and then the British in the 19th century. The first European settlers in South Africa were sponsored by the Dutch East India Company, which controlled Netherlands' trade between India and East Asia. The settlement established in the Cape in 1652 provided fresh food supplies for ships that were sailing to the east. This group of first settlers was led by Jan van Riebeek. Initially, van Riebeek and his group traded peacefully with the Khoi who lived in the area. However, after 20 years they decided they wanted to farm the food for themselves and began moving inland. They decided to become permanent settlers and farmers of vegetables, wheat and grapes for wine. In order to acquire land for farming, the Dutch settlers attacked Khoi communities and acquired more land forcefully. As the Khoi resisted the advances of the Dutch, there were more wars. The Dutch settlers also needed people to farm the land, and as the local Khoi resisted, they decided to import slaves from West Africa and Malaysia. This formed the beginning of the mixed race community in the Cape, and after 1700, some Dutch settlers moved away from the Cape in search for more land and became known as Trek Boers. The Trek Boers invaded more land that belonged to the Khoi and the Sun. They stole cattle and livestock for their sustenance. As the Khoi and the Sun resisted the Boers, they fought many wars but lost many because the Boers had guns. Eventually they retreated to the mountain areas such as the Kalagadi Desert, while the Nama moved to what we know as present-day Namibia. The Khoi and the Sun also died from European diseases such as smallpox, and the few Khoi people who remained in the Cape region were forced to work for the Boers as slaves. Many of the Boers became prosperous from slave labor before slavery was abolished in 1834. In 1806, the Cape became a British colony after the Dutch lost a war, and by 1820, there were 10,000 British settlers. These settlers were encouraged to become sheep farmers so they could produce wool for the British textile industry. As Britain passed laws against slave trade between 1807 and 1833, the British farmers and missionaries called for an end to the Boer slave system, which, but with an ulterior motive. They wanted the labor on the Boer farmers, so they decided to start paying workers, and most of the Khoi and African slaves left the Boer farmers to go and work for the British. To solidify their power, the British decided to start schools, made English the official language, and introduced laws and courts that would govern the Cape Colony. To resist the influence of the British, the Boers left the Cape Colony, and between 1835 and 1845, approximately 14,000 Boers left the Cape in a movement called the Great Trek. Eventually, these groups formed new colonies called the Orange Free State and the South African Republic or Transvaal. As the Boers moved inland, they came into contact with the Nguni, who they could not easily defeat. For 30 years, the British and the Nguni fought wars, but with no clear victor. In 1812 and 1818, the British fought the Tosa for land along the Fish and Kay rivers. And as the British demand for land increased, they also fought the Tosa again in 1820 and 1853. The Tosa were harder to defeat because they, like the European settlers, used guns. As a result, many Tosa people remained independent until the 1880s. Other African states also managed to resist the invasion of the European settlers. The Zulu, Soto, and Swazi states were powerful, while the Tswana, Pedi, and Venda, though small, remained intact. Some African states managed to force Boers and parts of the South African Republic and the Orange Free State to pay tribute to them. And other than land and farming, the British and the Africans traded for goods. Boers bought knives, guns, blankets, and plows in exchange for cattle, ivory, and goods produced by Africans. And some Tosa produced and sold wool to the British. Some African men would go to work for British or European settlers for short periods of time before returning to their communities. And until the 1870s, many African states within South Africa remained independent and in control of their land. However, the discovery of diamonds in 1867 and gold in 1885 changed the attitude of the British and soon they wanted the whole of South Africa for themselves.